What's up, Kidsway? And welcome back to another Sunday here of Church Online. Hey, my name is Pastor Julian, and I'm so happy that you guys are here because we are in a brand new series called Indescribable. And when I hear that word indescribable, it makes me think about one person. It makes me think about Jesus and how he is absolutely indescribable. Like, have you ever tried to describe Jesus? Like, if you try to do it, like, you kind of think about some words, but they don't quite fit. Like, none of the words we know can really actually describe Jesus to the fullest of his capacity. So, indescribable, in this series, we're going to be taking a look at Jesus and just how truly indescribable he is. Um, but as we go on throughout this series, you guys already know there's big answers, there's memory verses, and when it comes to the memory verse, I really need you guys to stay tuned because we've got a special special announcement at the end of service, but I'm getting a little too far ahead of myself. So the first thing I want to go over with you guys is our big answer, and that is there's no limit to God's creativity. Can you guys say that with me? Say there's no limit to God's creativity. That's awesome. Say it one more time. Say there's no limit to God's creativity. That's awesome, and that's what we're gonna be talking about throughout this whole series, is just exactly how creative God has made us. He's creative, he's like the number one creator, right? And he created us, and because he created us, we can be creative. And there's no limit to God's creativity and what he could do for our lives. And so our memory verse today comes from Psalm chapter 145, verse three, and it says, "Lord." You are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145, verse three. So make sure you mark that verse down. Get a Bible, write it down, do something because you're really gonna wanna make sure you know our memory verse for this series. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. But for right now, we're getting ready to go into a time of song and dancing and worship and praise. So stand up to your feet and let's worship our God through song and dance. Here we go.
the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Genesis, chapters 1 and 2. Kids Way, welcome back. And like I said, we're in a new series called Indescribable. Today's big answer is awesome and it's so, so good. It's the absolute truth. And it says, there's no limit to God's creativity. And today we're going to look into God's creativity by, his, by looking at his most amazing creation ever. And again, it's a creation that we fully don't even understand. And to do this, we're going to do something a little bit different. Usually we prepare a talk and we give you a talk and, and it's a little bit different. We read from the Bible and then we talk a little bit and then we read again from the Bible and then we talk a little bit. But today is going to be different. Today we're going to read straight from the Bible. So if you have your Bible, grab it. Remember earlier I said we're going to be in Genesis chapter 1. Ugh, if I can grab it here, here we go. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. And here we go. We're diving right in. And we're talking today about the story of creation. This is God's story of how he created everything in the earth. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And yeah, that's earth in space. And the earth is absolutely amazing. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Let's kind of take it day by day and really look and see what and when God created. So here we go. We're going to pick up in verse number three. And your Bible might sound a little bit different than mine, but that's okay because the teaching is still the same. So chapter one, verse three in Genesis says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. And, oh, okay, I get it. Okay, so this is kind of like the first day has passed, the sun has went down, and okay, so this is like nighttime. I get it. Okay, so so now on the second day, okay, there it is. So I'm, I'm starting to see how it's working. On the second day, we got our light back. And on the second day, this is where we pick up. And on the second day, this is what God had made. It said, Then God said, Let there be space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that's exactly what happened. God made the space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called this space sky. And then evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. Okay, here we go. The dark, okay. Still tracking along with the theme. I get it. Okay, tracking the second day. But now comes the third day. All right, we got our light back. So on the third day. And we're coming right along. So, so far we've got lightness, or we got light and dark, and sky and water. And God's got something absolutely massive for day number three planned. So let's look in and see what day number three holds. And this is what it says. It says, Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together in one place, so dry ground may appear. And that's exactly what happened. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas. And then we're going to jump to verse number 12. And it says, The land produced vegetation of all sorts of seed-bearing plants and trees with seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the third day. Okay, this is getting kind of a little old and repetitive, but okay, I get it because the sun goes down, we spend time at night, maybe we sleep, but the sun comes back up and we're back in to the fourth day. 
And so we pick up on the fourth day and things are really starting to kind of take shape, but check it out because it gets even more, God gets even more creative from here on. He's still busy at work. And on the fourth day, this is what we have. So in verse 16, it says, God made two great lights. Count with me. Can you say one? Okay, of course, counting to one is really easy. And now say two, that's right. God made two great lights. Can you guess what one of them was? Yeah, that's right, it was the sun. And yeah, the sun was really bright and it was, you guys know what the sun is and maybe if you've ever tried to look right at the sun, don't look right at the sun and I just, so, okay, calm down. So it's, it's super bright and you get what the sun is. You live in the sun, go away. Okay, Whew. that was really bright for a second. All right, so the two great lights, here we go. One was the sun. Do you know what the other great light was? Yeah, that's right, it was the moon. So God had made two great lights, the larger one, or the sun, to govern the day, and the smaller one, or the moon, to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. Okay, here we go again with the light. And then on the fifth day, we get our light back. Here we go, the fifth morning comes and arrives, and here we are on day number five, and we're continuing on. So we're in verse number 20, and this is what happens on the fifth day. Then God said, let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them saying, be fruitful and fill the seas and let the birds multiply on earth. And evening passed and morning came, marking day number, f don't, okay, okay, here we go. Marking day number five, the lights go out because it's dark again and it's night. And here we go, day number six and the lights back. All right, here we go, day number six. And might I contest, might I argue, or might I be so bold as to say, God's favorite creation was made on day number six. Are you guys curious to know what God made on day number six? Maybe you already know, maybe you don't, maybe you've never heard, but here we go. Day number six, this is what the Bible says happened on day number six. So verse 25 says, God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. But in verse 26 it, 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our own image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky, uh, uh, and the birds of the sky, the livestock, and all of the wild animals on earth, and the smallest animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it, reign over the fish in the sea, the birds of the sky, and of the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. And on the evening, and evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth, oh, come on. That was, get, I was, it was starting to get really good, okay. So that marked the sixth day, and now, do you guys know what comes after six? Yes, absolutely, seven comes after six. And here we go, we're on the seventh day, and on the seventh day, something completely different happened. Something, he actually, you know what, let me just read it from the Bible right here, because it's so different from any of the other days. And on day number seven, this is what the Bible and this is what God's word said happened. It said, so, nope, let me start. Verse, chapter two, verse two, this is where we're picking up. 
It says, on the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation. So he rested from all of his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all of his work of creation. Kids way, today's a little different. All we're doing is simply focusing on God. And we're getting ready to sing a song where we're gonna worship. And that's what we do every week is when we worship, we just focus on God. But I want you to do something. Just take a couple of seconds and think about something in this world that you enjoy. Maybe you enjoy being outside and while you're out there you enjoy the sun or maybe you enjoy the sounds of the birds and the noises, playing in the grass or playing with balls and sports and different kinds of things. What is it that you enjoy? And thank God for whatever that is, for whatever that time is that you have fun doing something. Because the truth is, God created this world and everything in it. So right now, we're getting ready to sing a song. And it's a song that we haven't done in a really long time, but it's a great song. Throughout this worship song, I want you guys to clap, to sing, to raise your hands, and just thank God for His creation. And whatever that thing is that you enjoy, because our God is amazing, and there is no limit to His creativity. So what do you say we all stand up on our feet, and let's worship and focus on our God together. Here we go. Never seen the wonder in the glimmer of her sight as the yeah. eyes begin to open and the blindness meets the light. If you have so say, I see the world in light, I see the world in wonder, I see the world in light. Blessed in living color, I see the world your way, and I'm walking in the light. Have you ever seen the wonder in the year of second life? Have you come out?
Kids Way, I love that song. And it's not the last that we've heard of that song because we're gonna be singing that song throughout this series. So I wanted to tell you guys, because if you remember from earlier, we mentioned that we've had a special announcement with in regards to our memory verse. But you know what, before we get there, let's go over our big answer because today's big answer is absolutely awesome. And it says, there's no limit to God's creativity. Can you guys say that with me? Say there's no limit to God's creativity. Awesome, say it one more time. Say there's no limit to God's creativity. You guys did great. And now to our memory verse. And I got an announcement about it because we, throughout this whole month, throughout this whole month of August, throughout this whole series of Indescribable, we are gonna give you a memory verse challenge. So what that means is that we challenge you to memorize our memory verse. Of course, that's kind of normal practice for Kids Way Studio, right? But we want you to memorize this memory verse and then we want you to create a video of you saying that memory verse without reading it from the Bible, without reading it from cue cards. We want you to memorize this verse and then create a video of you saying this memory verse. Have your parents film you, film yourself, use a cell phone, use a camera, whatever it is. But we want you guys to get creative when it comes to saying our memory verse. So dress up in a costume, go to a fun place, make a song out of it, do a couple of shots, a couple of edits, or just record it in one shot, whatever that looks like. We want you guys to be creative when it comes to filming this memory verse. Once you guys film yourself, we want you to submit it. And there's a couple different ways that you can submit it. You can have your parents submit it on our Facebook page and that's at Kidsway Studios dash Bridgeway Kids. Make sure that you use the hashtag KWS Memory Verse Challenge. We wanna make sure that you guys are submitting these videos, right? Because we want to see you guys. Another way that you can submit that is by email and you can send that directly to me. And my email is julian at bridgeway.tv. Julian at bridgeway.tv. Parents, that's another way that you can submit this. And we want to every week, as long as we're getting videos in, we want to be able to feature you guys who are submitting these videos. We'll pick one at random to feature every week on our Sunday morning service. So this service that you're watching right now, next week, it could be you that you see on YouTube, on TV, saying that memory verse. And then we're gonna feature some more on our Facebook page, of course. So make sure that you guys are getting these videos submitted. And one last thing, I think we should maybe go over this memory verse, right? Yeah, so our memory verse is in Psalm chapter 145, verse three. And it says, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145, verse three. That's our memory verse. You've heard the challenge, you know what to do. And if you still got questions, we're gonna have a graphic at the end of this service that comes up on the screen that kind of fills you in as to a couple of those things. So if you missed it, don't worry about it. We're gonna be posting about it. We're gonna be talking about it from now until August 23rd which happens to be the latest that you can submit a video. So make sure that you guys are recording yourselves, you're memorizing these verse, have your parents record you and submit these videos in because we wanna see you and we wanna make sure that you guys go off and, and finish this summer with some fun. Oh, and did I mention by August 23rd, we're gonna go over all the videos that have been submitted and we're gonna pick a winner that gets a prize. And I'm not gonna tell you what the prize is, I'm gonna hold on to that for just a little bit, but trust me, you're not gonna to wanna to miss out. So make sure that you get a video submitted by August 23rd. We're gonna feature you on this page, we're gonna feature you on this channel, and we're gonna get you a prize. We're gonna get one person, one family, a prize at the very end of it. So. That's our memory verse challenge. We hope that you guys had a great time here with us on our first Sunday of our series called Indescribable. And we'll see you guys right back here next week. Bye.